Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I am your host this evening. Now, today's episode is all about transferring artwork, your sketches and your drawings from one surface to another. There's a lot to cover and a lot of different methods that I wanted to show you specifically because you might not have some of the tools that I'm going to be showing and you might not have the ability to use some of this stuff. So I wanted to give you a lot of options. Uh, but if you are interested in anything that I am showing you today, make sure to go to the, go to the website, jerrysarterama.com and type in the search bar uh, today's class code, which is JL217. So it's over here in the corner somewhere over here. Um, and that's today's class code. So if you type in JL217, the teacher's card should come up and give you all the things that I'm gonna be going over today. So let's jump right in. Uh, first and foremost, I have a sketch. I did a quick little doodle, um, and down here I actually have the photo that I based it off of. Uh, my moderators, Amanda and Frida, should be uh, possibly popping in the link to the photo that I used just so you guys can see what I was working off of. But it's a lovely lady with some pretty flowers around her hair, or around the bottom of her hair to kind of cut off the bust, as well as uh, the top of her hair, which I absolutely loved. It was cute. So uh, the very first thing uh, is that I would sketch something like this, and then if I get my drawing completely set and ready to go, and I want to transfer it onto a canvas, um, how do you do that, you know? So the first thing uh, that I do is actually use this. This is not just the table. It's a accurate light tablet. Uh, now, this one that I'm going to be showing you is my own personal one. I took it from my office and I love it. I use it very often. Um, actually, last week when I was going over ink, uh, you know those little squid? The, it's, it's squid. The plural of squid is squid, right? We, we discussed this. I feel like I, the plural of squid, squids? Squid, squid. Squids. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> all the little squid that I drew I actually only drew one and then I used this to trace it multiple times onto the paper. So this is a way, this is a tool that I use to transfer my sketches in a manner that keeps me um, good as far as time management because I have a lot of work that I have to do and get through in order to make sure that I'm prepared for these shows for you guys. So this is a tool that I use a lot. So let's jump to the overhead and I will show you how this works. So. First and foremost, you got this right here. This is the power cord. Um, this is an additional switch that it comes with the light tablet. And then of course, here's my sketch. Um, and when you turn this on, which in just a minute, oh, look, it glows, it's lovely. Uh, but the first thing I do is I take either Bristol, or the really cool thing about this light tablet is that the light is so bright that it can actually go through quite a lot of stuff. So this Bristol is a hundred pounds, right? And you can see it straight through the paper. Sorry, it's a little hard to see, uh, but like in person, I can see the crisp lines and everything uh, shining through. So the th issue with that is that um, if you are using a light table, the easiest way to do it is in a dark room we can't exactly turn off all the lights in here. Um, but that's the way that your image is going to be a lot more crisp for you guys. Um, but this is a hundred pound uh, paper. This is Bristol. This is the Soho Bristol, which by the way, uh, should be in here shortly. Uh, if you go to the website and to the teacher's cart, I know technically speaking right now it says out of stock uh, right this second, but uh, it should be in, we just checked before the show, uh, within about a week or so. So you guys could be able to order this uh, here shortly. But this is 100 pounds and you can see that light shining through uh, not only this, but also this thick paper. Um, I think this is an 80 pound paper, to be honest. So it technically has to go through both and it does quite, quite well. Um, so this is a nice way that if I have, like when I did my sketch, I actually started it and wasn't really worried about the placement on my sheet of paper, but it's definitely not centered. So if I wanted to center this, you know, I can move it around wherever my paper needs to go. Uh, I can even tilt it if I wanted it a little bit more tilted. I can straighten it back out if I didn't like 
the way that that bottom was angled. You know, I have a lot of options of moving this around and even piecing multiple images together. Now, do we have a question? We do. Okay. Will this work with 140 pound watercolor paper? I don't, I believe so, but can we get 40, uh, you said 140 pound. 140 pound. All right, we're gonna go grab some 140 pound watercolor paper and make sure to see if it comes through. Because what I do have right here next to me is 110 canvas paper. So this also shines through no problem. Believe she's got, yeah, she's still grabbing it. So uh, this was the canvas paper that we uh, just came out with, which is really awesome. So it has that texture of canvas, but it is 110 pounds and it can still shine through no problem. Um, up oh, here we go. 140 pound watercolor paper we are going to see. There we go. Dun, da, da, da. Not a problem. Shines right through. Uh, it actually, like I said, this light is really intense. And right now I have it on the maximum setting. It is dimmable, so you can actually, you don't have to keep it up that high if you don't want it. But even at a lower setting, you can still see the image through this paper, not a problem. Um, but I, I have it up at the highest right now. Uh, so this is a 140 pound watercolor paper. I believe it's the Fabriano that she just grabbed. Um, so this, it's, it's really nice. And if you keep your lights on around you turned off and you're in a dark room, like if I'm in my office and I turn my office lights off and this is the only light I have, not a problem. It's even more crisp than what it is right now. Um, are you guys turning off the lights? No, they were asking about 300 pounds. So she was oh, oh, three, all right. Let's see. Let's see how far it can go. <laughs> um, now, while she's getting that, I also wanted to show you uh, canvas. This is actual cotton canvas that I grabbed. It will absolutely shine through that as well. So this is uh, cotton canvas. Uh, it's the Yes canvas. So it is uh, universal primed for literally anything and you can see through that uh clear as day not a problem i don't have high hopes for this <laughs> i am curious to see if it will shine through the 300 pound paper real quick going back to the soho canvas paper yeah is that right it's uh technically the paper is sized so it is um i believe yeah it's meant for acrylic so it's not oil paper. I wouldn't recommend using this for, uh, here's the 300 pound paper. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this for oil paints just because it is not sized for oil painting, but it is technically still paper. It has that texture like uh, canvas, but it is sized to accept acrylics. So uh, I, what was the painting that I did with this? I believe, it was the cherries that I painted on this pa uh, paper, just to kind of test it out. I painted a couple of cherries uh, just to kind of see how it would work. And uh, it did technically move a little bit, but I didn't actually find um, that it buckled and warped uh, bad at all. Like, I don't remember. It's been a really long time <laughs> since I've tested this out. Uh, but no, I, I don't think this paper actually moved or buckled. Uh, very much. Now it, it is still paper, so it is going to have some movement, um, but it's not bad. All right, so this is the 300 pound paper. Eh. <laughs> is it all the way up? Wow, it is all the way up. I can still technically see. Now, if I were to turn the lights off on this, I could see just enough to hint at. I wonder if I can actually, if I put my hands over here to like darken it, because I can see that. In person, I can see through this paper. Um, especially if I, you know, get the lights kind of out of the way. So if I were working on this paper at home or in my office with the lights turned off, I can probably guarantee that I would be able to actually see through this paper. You guys can see a little bit of a ghost image, but I can actually see through it. I'm, I'm massively impressed. I didn't think I was going to actually see through it. It's a pretty good light box. Yeah, this thing is really, really bright. It is a fantastic option. So uh, this is why this is my own personal one uh, and I use it on a daily basis uh, just because I burn through making artwork. I have a lot of things that are coming at me with my, my job. You know, I need to make artwork for different various reasons, for the, the videos that you guys get to watch, uh, a lot of different things. So 300 pound paper, you can see it.
You know? Got two more coming. Hang on. Uh oh. You guys are still asking. We're gonna see how far it can go, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> We're gonna find the threshold for this. Somebody asked about gessoed canvas. Gessoed canvas. Okay. All right. Uh, what type of canvas is this? It's paramount. Paramount. All right. So this is the paramount gessoed canvas. Absolutely, you can see through it. Uh, and this canvas is primed. Uh, I believe multiple times mm -hmm. to make sure that this is ready to be painted. So there are multiple layers of gesso and this is the uh, canvas for you guys. So uh, yeah, you can absolutely see through this. Sanded what? pastel paper. Sanded pastel paper, not a problem. Yes, you can absolutely see through it. Um, the only thing with sanded pastel paper that you do need to keep in mind is that these numbers on the back, you do also see, so that might kind of irritate you a little bit, you know, because I can see the, the 400 here and here and here. Um, but as far as tracing my image down, yes, absolutely, you can see through this. Now, when it comes to uh, whenever you are tracing on here, uh, one thing I do highly, highly recommend, tape. Tape your artwork and your paper that you're working on down. Um, this is my go-to tape. This is the Pro Artist Tape. It is pH neutral. Uh, so it won't actually add any acidity to your paper or your artwork or your canvas, whatever you're working with. It is archival, so you don't have that issue. Uh, but as you can see, like this right here buckles. So if I'm tracing my image down, even if it's not a buckled paper, if it's any of the other ones that I showed you that were laying nice and flat, if I'm not very actively keeping this down with one hand and tracing with another, there is a possibility that it's going to shift on me. And if this shifts while I'm in the middle of tracing my image down, I'm going to be frustrated trying to get it back. So the way I avoid that is to just tape it and my paper and everything down to the surface of this. Do we have any more questions? Currently you have a line drawing on the bottom. Could you use a photograph? Do I have, actually I have a photograph of the canyon that I was painting from. I mean, I can, here, we'll, we'll go through the whole thing. All right. Now that's printed on just regular printer paper. Not yes, this is printed. This is an image printed from a, uh, the printer here at the office. It's, it's a just printer. a regular, I mean, it's a good printer. Don't get me wrong, but it's just computer paper. Nothing special about the paper. But yes. it's not an actual photograph on like, a printed photograph like you used to Oh, like an off. actual photo photo. I think that's what they're asking. Sorry, I have glue on the back. Um, that, oh. that's going to depend on the photo paper just because she, you have one. has one. Yeah, uh, cause, I don't know if that's going to work, but you can always, always take, make a photocopy of the original. Yeah, so you can you always. Photograph. Absolutely. I don't know if that's going to work just because the photo paper that your photos are printed on, that actual glossy photo paper is real, real thick. Um, I don't know how, I mean, but I don't think it's even any thicker than the 300 pound, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think know. That 300 pound paper was gonna work, <laughs> had no problem, so. Right? Um, but like, you know, I can, you can always, like Katie was saying, uh, make a photocopy of your photo and then print it and then the light should be able to shine through. Um, this is a little darker. This is a little harder to see, you know, the images. But um, the one thing that I can say about this light tablet that does not work very well, is that the photo? Oh, <laughs> that's adorable. All right, so guys, you're gonna see the most adorable puppy ever. Look at this little baby. <laughs> All right, so there is, it, this is actually printed on photo paper from, I believe you said Walgreens. Um, I can sort of see through it. I mean, it's on the not paper. yeah. I'm 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 going through it. Hold on. Here's the canvas. So like I can see through that. Um, again, there are other options that I'm going to be showing you today that might be an easier method of transferring this onto another surface. So um, yeah, there's. I honestly believe this is the canvas paper. I'm losing track of what I'm grabbing. Uh, yeah, so the thinner the paper, the easier you're gonna have transferring your images down, but this is this is a photo and it works. Uh, again, everything's kind of buckled up, so it's really hard for me to keep this uh, nice and flat. So I would tape everything down. Um, now, 
the photos I probably wouldn't tape just because I'd be afraid that they would, um, like the tape might peel off the surface of your photo and then you'd be without a photo and I don't want to do that to poor Christina's photos. Um, but that, yes, this thing is a really awesome um, option as far as a tool to have in your arsenal as far as uh, getting things transferred around and even splicing your images together. Like if I wanted to add more flowers or if I wanted to put another person down here, I can put those images together and then transfer them onto another piece of paper kind of a thing. Um, so this is a really, really awesome tool and I wanted to show you that. Do we have a question? I have a question about the like tablet itself. Is yeah. there any issue with storing it upright? No, actually that's how I store it. Uh, in my office, because I don't keep this on my desk, um, I actually unplug it from here. Uh, let me turn this off before I do that. So I unplug it from here and I actually store it sitting next to my trash can underneath my desk. That's how I store this. Uh, and FYI, just so everyone can see, it is extremely thin. Oh, go back to the, oh, the okay. overhead. I'm switching. <laughs> nope. It's really, really thin. So this thing is, it's, this is a big one and it's actually not that heavy. Like it's, it's got some heft to it because this is technically, I believe, tempered glass. Mm -hmm. But um, it is very thin. So it actually doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Uh, but yeah, that's my, my go-to for that. But oh, uh, the one thing I did want to show you, the one thing that it definitely cannot transfer onto, stretched canvas. The light goes through it, but it's not close enough put the, to put, uh, you can put the image yeah. uh, up against the actual canvas and it's still not good enough. So that's why um, this light tablet is a really great option, but like if you're trying to stretch it or put it on stretched canvas, you're not going to see through it. Uh, this is why I'm showing you options, many, many options. Uh, the other thing that it's not gonna go through is a canvas panel. This is just, it's no, not ever gonna happen. <laughs> so if you are you know, working on these two surfaces or something that you can't see the light through, I'm gonna show you other options on how to get your image transferred. Um, so before we switch to anything else, let me pull this off the table um, and then I will show you Sorry, I'm trying to plug this thing in down here because I need I that for later. I will say one more thing about that light tablet that I love. Hmm. It never gets hot. It doesn't. It does it not get hot because it is LEDs. Mm -hmm. So it, there's no heat on this. Like I just had it on for how long? Yeah. And it's cool. Completely cool. So there is no heat buildup for this. It is, um, it's really awesome. I love this thing. All right, so I'm going to put this over here. Hopefully I don't smack it on the concrete floor. Sorry, gotta take care of my light tablet. Um, and now the other ways of transferring your image if you can't use a light tablet. So I did, where is my, there it is. I made a photocopy of my sketch, right? So, cause I didn't wanna actually use my original sketch and mess it up. But what I'm gonna use is the age old technique of pencils. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're going to need to go back to the dynamic <laughs> to show you guys. All right. So this, again, is just I photocopied it onto just regular old printer paper. Um, and the reason why is because if I destroy this, I don't care. I can throw this away if I need to. I can paper mache it into other artwork. But what I like to do is um, I like to actually hold it up to light and you guys can see kind of through it a little bit uh, if I put it at an angle to where I can see where my image is. And then I take a pencil. And so I know where my image is, is right about here. The reason why I do the outline is to where I know where I'm going to need to draw. Now, I, hopefully they can see that. It's real light, sorry. So um, for this one, <laughs> bless you, Katie. <laughs> In case anybody heard that. That was Katie's sneezes. They're adorable. Um, okay, so when I do this technique, 
Uh, for the back of the paper, what I use is the softest lead in pencil that I can find. Uh, so using the Cezanne, well, Cezanne, Cezanne uh, graphite drawing pencils set, uh, there is a 12B in here. So that is my softest, because remember in your pencil range, the Bs are the soft, so the higher the number, the softer your lead. And then I'm just going to do this all in that boundary where I know my image is, so that way I'm not wasting the pencil, and I know everything is going to be covered. Now, I'm not gonna do the entire thing because you guys don't really need to see me do that, right? That's enough right here is probably the amount that I would really want to put on there. Uh, now, so when this is the 12B, get that little extra scriplets off there. Um, so the 12B is what I use on the back. Now to transfer it down, and I'm gonna grab, I'll use my, my stretch canvas, right? I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna use the hardest pencil that I can find, or my handy dandy Bic pen. <laughs> These are my go-to when it comes to transferring it down this way. Now I will make sure that I center it wherever I need it to be on my canvas. Um, if I have multiple things going on, I might even cut this out and then tape it down. Uh, but again, I will want to tape this down before I start drawing it out. Because as I transfer, as I do my little doodles, my little scribbles of where her hair is, right? Let's do this flower. Remember, this is just my sketch, so if I end up changing my drawing later on, it's not a huge deal, um, but if you really want to get very specific on where you're transferring this and it's your final image and you're good and ready to set to go, you can get very, very uh, precise on where you want your lines. Um, but there you go. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me pull it up a little bit. It's real hard to see. That's good though. It's real light. But that's the thing though, is that um, I use the softest lead on here and that tiny, tiny amount is what transferred. Now it's enough for me to see, and if I need to, I can erase that back out very easily. Um, in fact, I have a vanish eraser down here. And it's completely gone, the part that I just erased out, you know? Um, so this is the reason why I use graphite and definitely you can use pastels, you can use charcoal if you want to, but if you use charcoal, I highly recommend using willow charcoal, not compressed, because compressed, once you transfer it through like this, is very hard to erase back out. Uh, but that's why I use graphite, because uh, pencils are very inexpensive, um, but I also recommend using the softer uh, of the leads that you can on the back, and then using a harder one to transfer your, your lines, uh, or a big pen, because this also works really, really well. Now I moved it and I would have to erase what I did and then start back over. But if I quickly use a big pen, I can transfer it down again. Um, but th this is a really nice way of um, kind of keeping track of where you've already traced. Because if I'm photocopying this, I might actually print this out at a uh, lower opacity. So if I print this out at like 60%, my lines are now gonna be on the grayer side. So if I use a black pen on top of it, I can see where I'm tracing, and then that way I can kinda of keep track of where I was. You know, it's a little bit easier to do. Um, red pen for that exact reason. Yeah. <laughs> red pens, uh, colored pens are also really nice to use this uh, process for, right? So do we have any questions before I move on? So oh, somebody said you could use a red pen to see. That's what, yeah. Oh, red pens are great. <laughs> no, um, using colored, uh, but I would recommend uh, when you use pens on these, do not use gel pens because the, the ink from that tends to soak into the paper really fast. Uh, and in order to get that pressure consistent, the ballpoint pens that are not the gel ink are the best ones that I found. You don't want to use gel ink. They just, it bleeds and then it might go through the printer paper and then get onto your canvas and then there's a whole new mess that you have to deal with. 
Um, but this is really, really a great process for smaller images. Because once you start getting big, like say I wanted to do a bigger version of it, or uh, is this the same size? I don't know if that, nope, I even got bigger. I went 12 by 12 because that is the size of my panel, right? So um, right here, I took my image, my original sketch, right? And I scanned it in and I put it into Photoshop. And these things that you're seeing in the corner here are my registration marks. Uh, the circles are the registration marks. The, the lines are the uh, crop marks or the technical terms. So you can turn those on in your printing if you're using specifically Photoshop or there's a lot of other uh, programs that have that option as well. So if you turn those on, you can now see the boundaries of your photo. And uh, the reason why I like to use Photoshop is because I can make uh, my image fit within those bounds and centered really nicely or placed on that, uh, that size canvas before I actually even print it out. So I know my, my canvas is going to go here and my image is now perfectly centered in here. Uh, but again, how do you get this transferred onto your canvas, you know? Um, so when that is getting larger, I don't want to have to sit here with a pencil and color this all in. Now, will I do that if that's my only option? Absolutely. I have done that before. It is kind of a pain, but um, this is why if I have a larger section like this to do, um, a willow charcoal is great because you can get a lot of coverage for a larger area. Um, pencils work best because willow charcoal can rub off really, really, really easily, which is good if you need to fix your drawing. Um, but to sit there and cover this whole thing in with a graphite pencil is just, no. <laughs> it, ain't nobody got time for that. So what I use is transfer paper. So this is essentially a, oh, what is it? What's that paper that you use for baking? Like wax paper? Or parchment. Parchment paper, that's it. Wax paper has wax on it. Don't put wax paper in the oven ever. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't put wax paper in the oven. Frida says. Um, Don't but do it. Oh, if I can open this, there are, there's a bag inside of a bag. Ooh. All right, so this is kind of like parchment paper. So it's that real thin uh, sheet of paper and it already has that coating of the graphite on it. So if I wanted to transfer this whole thing down, I can place this onto, sorry, I'm gonna try and flatten that out, onto my panel, put this on here, and I'm gonna again either grab my um, my big pen or my very, very hard pencil. So remember again, hardness of pencil, the H's are the harder lead, the higher the number, the harder the lead it is. And the soft ones are the B's. So the, the higher the number on the B's, the softer the lead is. Um, so if I were to do this and take my pencil and transfer down where her face is, and I'm doing this very sloppily. Please forgive me. Because we got a lot to get through. But if I pick that up, again, make sure you tape everything down. Ooh, that got real light right at the very bottom where I was trying to go real, real fast. But I can see where her face now is. Um, now, the Creative Mark graphite sheets, they come in 9 by 13, I believe also 18 by 24. But if you start getting even bigger, there are other options like the Soral transfer paper. Uh, these are really awesome because they come in rolls. Um, and the reason why I have two boxes is because they also come in different colors. So if I am transferring something, oh, say, I'm sorry, you're going to have to probably zoom out to see this. The 24 here I'll hold it up here this is a 24 by 24 this is a just a white canvas um, this transfer paper 
right here comes in a roll. Let me, this is the graphite. Um, I can see the color on the end. Oh, I hate these little tabs. They're hard to pop open. But once you get it. So they come in a roll, and you have the same exact thing as the Creative Mark graphite sheet that I showed you, but this is in the graphite color, um, and it's the exact same stuff. So it has that um, powder coating on the inside of those sheets, uh, and the, the sheets are very, very thin. But let's say maybe you're not working on a white surface. Maybe you've already laid down some acrylic paints. Um, so this is something that if I were to work on it, I really wouldn't want to mess up my background just because I put down a lot of paint and let it drip down and there's no way I'm going to be able to fix that if I make a mistake on top of it. So um, this is where the white transfer paper will come in handy. Um, and just to kind of show you guys, let's go to the overhead. Sorry, I'm trying not to get this everywhere, but I'm just gonna make a mess. I'm sorry, guys. So it's a really long sheet, really long. And you can tape these down, but I'm just gonna use um, the back side of my pen here. And forgive me, because I, I can get this off. Don't worry, I will. But I'm just gonna scribble a line on here so you guys can see it transferred. Frida's face, I'm sorry. <laughs> forgive me. But this white transfer paper is now visible all the way across. Now, even in the yellow, I can still see it. It's very, very faint, but in person, I can see that. Um, but this is where they also, the Sorol transfer paper comes in multiple colors. Um, maybe if you have a darker background, you can use the white. If you have um, like a weird mid-tone, uh, like blue, you can use red. Uh, something that's on the opposite side of that color something that's going to be visible. We have questions. We have, I have a lot of people saying that they smudge really bad. Um, this transfer any, paper? In general, any of the, the carbon paper things. Do you have any tips for that? Um, if you transfer everything down. Now, are you saying that it smudges really bad just by touching? Yeah. Or, okay, because I was going to say, that's something that I've found that if I have this laid down on my canvas and I, like, rest my arm and I'm drawing over here, maybe where I was touching it transfers down onto the canvas. That's kind of the point of these things is that if I wanted to, let me take the vanish eraser, I can erase this back out. Now, that's just something that you're gonna have to erase back out and take care of just because it's, it's gonna happen. Um, but that's why this is so removable because if that happens, you can very easily take care of it. Um, and then also taping it down securely will help as well. Yeah, that's the other thing, is that if you do tape these things down, like for this size canvas, I would probably tape my sheets uh, first, and I would tape them down to my canvas, and then I would put my, my artwork on top, and I'm, this is where I might actually cut out, I take this, I might actually cut this out, place it on my canvas wherever I wanted it kind of a thing, and then I would tape that down and then transfer exactly where I need to be. Yes, question? What about if you're getting ready to do a watercolor painting? Uh, graphite and charcoal will smudge if you add water to it. Yes. Um, well, watercolor does not really smudge graphite too bad. That's, that's the one thing because, uh, you know, every time I've done like a pencil drawing, and then I've had uh, watercolor on top of it, you will never ever get that, that pencil drawing really out. Um, so it, that's one way of, I, I don't think the, the graphite's really gonna smudge too bad on you. Um, but if you wanted to, I'm hesitant to say put a layer of fixative down just because I don't know what that's gonna do to your watercolor paper. Your, your absorbency at that point might have an issue um, just because you're kind of changing the sizing of your paper and you're fixing graphite down onto it and now creating a barrier to where your water isn't gonna really be able to go through it, if that makes any sense. Um, but with watercolor paper, it's flat. So that's why I would suggest using maybe something like a light tablet. 
Um, but if you do the pencil on the back of your paper and then transfer that down, um, the pencil should stay for the most part. It's not really gonna smudge too, too bad. Now, if it is smudging too, too bad, maybe go down a couple notches on the, the uh, softness. So I was using a 12B, maybe use something like a 5B would be better because it's gonna smudge less than a 12B because it's not as soft, if that makes sense. I hope it does. All right, so those are the transfer papers. Do we have any other questions on those before I move on? Okay, so if you do not have transfer paper at home and you are working on something a little bit larger or maybe that's just not your your thing and it's not quite working, um, you can do something that's called the grid method. All right. So, oops, sorry, I have a lot of stuff on my table here. I'm trying to just shove it over to the side, ignore that. Um, here's my, my little sketch, right? So I have a 12 by 12 canvas, right? And I have gridded my 12 by 12 canvas six by six. And then I printed two different sizes. Maybe, maybe you don't have the ability to print this big. So I wanted to show you kind of how to do this on a smaller scale and how to scale your drawings. Because if you wanted to, you could absolutely print this off this large and make it a 12 by 12. And I technically printed this on multiple pieces of paper and then taped them together. So you might have to do that um, and just kind of line it up. I use my light tablet to line it up, FYI. Light tablets are awesome. Uh, but then I could grid this off in the exact same manner that I did for my canvas and then I'd be able to do that. Now, again, I did this on Photoshop, so I made my, my actual canvas that I was working on digitally a six by six. And then I centered my artwork and I put my bounding boxes and then, sorry, that's upside down. I gridded it off in the same exact manner as my canvas. So because this is a six by six and this is a 12 by 12, I am now scaling my artwork. So these are one inch squares. These are two inch squares. So for every one inch, I had to draw two inches over here. Hope that makes sense, right? So I did this one inch at a time. This is two inches at a time. Uh, so now what's really, really awesome, let me grab my pencils again. I'm losing my stuff. Um, so this one, I, again, when I'm sketching straight onto a canvas like this, I am probably going to use a harder lead just because I want my lines to be relatively on the light side. Um, so like usually I grab like a, an HB or something along those lines. So where it's also still kind of on the softer side to where I can erase it back out if I need to. But this is a really cool method because now all I have to do is kind of keep whatever is inside of this square is what goes inside of this square. And you have to just kind of put whatever's here is now in here. And they kind of correspond that way. If you really, really need to, you can do A, B, C, D, E, F, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and then do the same thing on your canvas kind of a thing. I probably wouldn't write my letters on my canvas because I don't want to really have to erase that out, but this is gonna be a way of um, almost like Battleship. Uh, A3 has very, very little in there. A A4 has absolutely nothing, so I wouldn't have to draw anything in there, if that makes sense. But now all I have to do is focus on what's in this tiny little square and not the entire image, and these will give me uh, points of reference. So. If I wanted to draw here, her hair goes up, and then it kind of crosses that between those two lines right about here, and then over here, it crosses right down, but not quite to this last line, and then it pops out that way. So this is a nice way of being able to actually redraw your drawing in a larger scaled format. Um, now, you can scale things three, four times the size. You can, you can scale it as large as you need to, um, but this is a really awesome way of being able to scale your drawings and transfer it at the same time. Do we have any questions about that? Because it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but we're about to get a little bit more complicated using the exact same method, 
but a little different because it's fun. <laughs> um, oh, and before I move on, pro tip. If you are using the grid method and you're doing something like this where it's a portrait and you have, a, or even, you know, a, a car or something that has a lot of detail in one tiny little area and you're trying to get those, uh, break your grids into even smaller sections. So like over here, I don't need those smaller sections just because it's the outline of her hair. But in her face, I might actually divide that grid even further. And then again, over here, do the exact same thing. So if I split these squares in half just across her face, I have more points of reference in order to get those tiny details accurately placed onto my canvas. So uh, that's a little tip when it comes to using the grid method. Now, again, remember, I am going to show you things that uh, involve many different methods. And um, hopefully this is charged enough to kind of show you. So um, I wanted to show you a method that uses technology. And uh, so I actually grabbed my own iPad. Uh, this is my, my iPad here. Uh, let me unlock it here. All right. So I happen to have Procreate on my iPad. Uh, there are a million different applications that use th this kind of technology. Cool. We uh, turned down the, the screen here so you guys can see. Um, so, and actually, I'm sorry, guys, can you go back to the front camera? Because I need to show you something. If you're trying to draw really big, I wanted to show you something that uses the grid method, but it's called the doodle grid method. And it's for those of us who don't really want to sit there with a ruler and draw perfect little squares over and over again. So you get to doodle all over your canvas. Uh, this is a, a method where you can actually use it to scale up your drawings much, much larger. You can even use this on the side of a building. So if you were to take doodles like this, and then I took a photo of it on my iPad here, right? So we can go back to the dynamic here and I can show you guys. I imported that photo into my canvas. And the canvas that I'm working on right here, I can scale up and down here, which is really nice. Uh, this is the exact same size as my canvas. So this right here that I'm working on is a 24 by 36. So is my canvas. Uh, yes, it's on my iPad, but it's one of those things where I can now uh, use it in, in uh, kind of a, you'll see, sorry. It's, it's hard to explain. Uh, am I, I'm sorry, this is not gonna, my pencil's not connected. Technical difficulties, excuse me. Oop. I think it's connected now. There we go. All right, so. I want to warp this image, right? So if I come down here and I'm using my move tool and I actually want to distort technically is the term. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull the corners of my canvas. Actually, you know what? Let me reset that because I need to just scale this up real quick. I'm going to scale this up as close to the edges as I can, right? So it's not quite to the edges of my, my canvas here, but now I can hit the distort tool and I can pull the corners of the photo of my canvas to the corners of the image that I'm working on in here. I hope that makes sense. Is everyone, everyone following me so far? All right, now, there you go. So you can still technically see the top of the, uh, the easel there. But now the image of my canvas is now a 24 by 36 on my actual iPad. Um, and if I take my photo, which I can scale, that's not the one that I wanted to do. Sorry, this guy. Ah, I can scale that, right? Let me undo that. If I also make it multiply, I can now place my image on my canvas digitally and have my doodles 
if I zoom in here, as reference points for where I need to draw. So right here, where I wrote Jerry rule, Jerry's rules, is the top of her hair. Right here where that little uh, scribble line goes is, oop, if I'm not drawing, uh, where the top of her hair goes. And I just need to make sure that it also goes through my, the bottom of my little ghost. And I can take that and I can transfer my artwork onto my canvas using technology, which is really, really awesome. And again, this is, uh, technically speaking, the Procreate application uh, that is on my own personal iPad. There are several different applications that you can get for your cell phone that are absolutely free. All you have to do is just make sure that you can uh, do the layering of the images and make sure that you can uh, warp them the way that I just showed you. But uh, you can use it on your cell phones if you have a smartphone. Again, you might not have the ability to do this, but this is another method of being able to do that. Now, uh, if I were to turn off the image of my canvas, right, and turn on the image of the wall that I just took of the outside of the building, right, let me get back on my, my artwork layer. I can now place my artwork on a wall. And then if I had the doodle, if I had spray painted doodles all over that wall, I can now get my image transferred onto a building wall, which is absolutely huge because you can see the size of this bench. If we're all being completely honest, I come up to about here. <laughs> Katie's up here. I'm down here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, you can scale images using this doodle grid method. Absolutely huge. So this is a, a really fun way of not having to sit there and draw out a perfect grid that then you have to use a ruler. And let's be honest, we're creative people. We just need to scribble sometimes. So is everybody with me on, uh, the doodle grid method. All right. Uh, now, the last thing I actually wanted to show you guys, um, oh, we do have a question. Wait, it's not about the doodle grid, it's about the grid grid. The grid grid, Do okay. you go back and erase your lines at the end? That's why I um, don't use the grid method very often, uh, just because, yes, you do need to go back and either erase out your grid uh, or you have to completely obliterate it. Well, unless you don't care if the grid is there. Um, me, personally, I would not want to see the grid, so I would have to then take my Vanish Eraser and just make sure that I get rid of it. Um, the reason why I don't use the grid method very often is because there usually in my artwork are sections of my, my canvas that I leave raw. Um, I, or if I tone my whole canvas, I don't paint over all of it. Uh, so if I have a grid on there and that's gonna be visible, that would bother me personally. If it doesn't bother you, you can absolutely leave it or you can use acrylic paint and paint on top of it and get rid of it that way. I mean, there's a million diff different ways that you can get rid of the grid if you want to. Do we have another question? Okay. Um, but the last thing uh, that I wanted to show you guys, I actually technically can't. Uh, it's a projector. Um, that is, uh, we have, I believe, a couple of them on our website. I did not actually put them into the teacher's card, I'm sorry. Uh, but there are some of them, there, there's different ways of using projectors. Of course, they all come with instructions. Uh, some of them are actually digital, which is really cool. So you can take a digital file and pop it in digitally uh, with a USB flash drive and that should be the way that you can actually then project it onto a wall or a canvas or whatever. And uh, I mean, a projector is a way that you can scale it up or scale it down uh, using light, but there is no way I'm gonna be able to show you guys here on the set. There's not enough space and there's definitely too many lights for me to show you how to do that. Um, but if you, yeah, I mean, if you work, go on YouTube and find, uh, there's a million tutorials on how to do that as well. Um, how are we on time? Because I'm, I'm all out of things to show you. you. Holy it. cow, I, I finished the show on time. <laughs> but last questions uh, for anybody uh, as my giraffe head falls off. Um, if anybody has any questions about the different methods that I showed you 
or uh, kind of issues that you're having when transferring, you absolutely can pop those into the chat. I'll be more than happy to go through everyone's questions and comments after the show and make sure to get to anybody who I might have missed. Or you can also send me a direct message uh, on my Facebook host page, which is Emmy, host of Jerry's Live. Uh, and then uh, you can also, if you have any other things that you want to show, any other really fun transferring methods that you guys have done, you can also post them to the uh, Jerry's Live Facebook group, which is called the Jerry's Live Facebook group. And in order to get into it, you do have to answer the one question. So don't forget that. Now, do we have one more question? Could you quickly go over the purposes and the use of a scaling ruler and a prospect? Prospect. That's the red. Oh, uh, that's the, um, <sighs> there's a term for that. It's not, is it, it's not prospect. Proportional, Proportional ruler. drawing tool. Proportional ruler, proportional dividing tool. Yeah. All right. So, um, what was the first one? I'm sorry, my brain just went. Nope. Scaling, ru scaling, scaling ruler. Scaling ruler. Uh, that is usually more used for architecture. Um, so they are the rulers that come in. Uh, it's like a triangle shape, and each side of the ruler usually has one or two different scales. Uh, so if you are uh, using one scale, that each scale is different. I believe there's like a one to one, one to 10, things like that. Um, and then without being able to physically show you, it's hard to explain. Um, you can use then those proportions to then transfer your image and scale it up or down, depending on which way you need to go. Um, but it's just a matter of, again, like measurements, uh, where if I'm measuring this, each one inch equals two inches on this canvas. If I'm going, Larger, maybe every one inch equals 10 inches on another canvas. Uh, it's that ratio that you need to just keep it consistent. Um, so it depends on the, the side of the ruler that you're using and kind of how to, to use it that way. Um, but it's typically more used for architecture, uh, like blueprints and things like that, uh, when you're making sure that everything is physically to scale. Like, so you don't have to do math. Yeah. Like a toilet, there's a certain size of a toilet, a certain size of a door. Uh, and so when you're doing architects, uh, architecture blueprints and design wa work that way, um, things need to be a certain size. Um, I actually used to work for a sign company and had to use those uh, proportional rulers all the time for our signs just to make sure that they also coincided with uh, the proposals, coincided with the signs that we were using. Now, the uh, what is that tool called again? Prospect Proportional Divider Drawing Tool. Prospect Proportional Divider Tool. I believe Prospect is the brand, and it's called a Proportional Divider Tool. It's essentially the one that looks like a big X, uh, mm -hmm. and you have one side is a lot shorter than the bottom side. So if you were to, I'm going to take your pencils, have a visual, E. <laughs> so the top part is usually, well, it doesn't matter which way you flip it, one side is usually going to be shorter than the other side. So essentially, if I were to take, uh, let's go to the overhead real quick. If I were to take the shorter side and line up where her eyes are, uh, sorry, it, I'm using pencils as an example, right? So if I get a point of reference, like the outside of her eyes, right? If I were to set that proportion to whatever I was looking for and I was trying to scale it up, I'd set the size of her eyes and then the back side would be the proportion that I need to draw then. So this is where you would keep your, your ratios larger. So the wider something is, the wider it's gonna be on this side. Now if I were to change my proportions and make it like a one-to-one, -one, it would be dead set in the middle kind of a thing. So wherever I measure is going to be the same on both sides. Now, if I were to flip that and have something that I want to scale down, I could then measure her hair, like the outside of her hair where I wanted it, and then the outside of her hair would be that size. I hope that explains it, because I, I don't think we have one here. I believe Katie just tried to look to see, um, but I, 
That's a way of you scaling your drawings. Where it went. Yeah, I don't know where they went. Rulers still um, walk away. Yeah, we tend to lose rulers around here, uh, unfortunately. But that one seemed to have uh, cr grown legs and walked away. But that's essentially how to use it: is that you set the middle portion of your proportional divider uh, wherever to the ratio that you are looking to then scale it up or down. I hope that explains that. And my giraffe head is still falling off. Uh, but that was that was uh, transferring, guys. That was being able to scale and transfer your drawings. I hope you've learned lots. Uh, this is something that I use on a daily, daily basis, um, it, especially transferring things, uh, scaling them up or down, being able to get all of the artwork that I create for you guys to see and uh, to see on the, our YouTube videos and for packaging designs and all the different things that I do around just the office. This is things that I use in my tool, uh, my tool bag in order to get everything done just because time management, especially if you're a freelance illustrator or uh, you know somebody who's trying to get ready for a, uh, a gallery show, you have to get your artwork done in time. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. If you miss a deadline, you miss a deadline, and you do not want to be known as the artwork or the artist who misses deadlines. That's not a good thing. the The art world is very small. We all know each other more or less, uh, and if you don't, you'll you'll get to know people. Uh, so you don't want to be known as the one who just doesn't get things done. So these are ways of making sure that you can get things done in time. Uh, now, yes, granted, if you use a light tablet to trace. A photograph and do your artwork that way. I will give the disclaimer of you are now cheating yourself out of the ability to uh, work on your own skill set of drawing and being able to uh, have those skills instead of just transferring and you know copy and paste a kind of a photograph down onto a canvas. Now uh, I will say this is a really nice way of also checking your proportions. So. I would like to recommend that you try to draw it freehand if you are trying to copy a photograph and then use these tools to also check your proportions and being able to, to see how well you did because uh, that way uh, you'll be able to further your art skills. So I don't want you guys to just be copying a photograph, uh, you know, but if you are kind of in time crunch, this is a nice skill set to have and trust me, I use each and every one of these methods on a regular basis just to get everything done in time. But that was transferring. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out directly to me uh, or put them in the chat below. I will be going over all the, the chats that you guys pop in uh, at the end of the show. Uh, but make sure you also join me next week because we're going to get a little bit more fun with it. And uh, well, I'm still going to be doing fine art sculptures but we're gonna be doing plaster cloth sculptures and I'm gonna be a little goofy, uh, you know, cause I mean, clearly that's how I roll. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna be making some fun Halloween kind of themed plaster sculptures uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Something that you guys could do over the holiday break if you guys wanted to. Uh, and it's very versatile for all types of different things. But join me next week. I'll see you then. Bye.